Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a quick makeup look for a Zoom call that I have. And I know these kind of tutorials are everywhere now. Get ready for your Zoom, how to wear makeup for Zoom. Um, but I'm genuinely having a Zoom meeting and it's one that's going to be filmed. So I felt the extra pressure to make sure that my makeup was looking better. I mean, for my own, for me, not necessarily for anyone else, but I just quite enjoy putting on makeup, especially I think now when I'm not going to as many physical meetings, it kind of gets me ready. There's a slight element of preparing, um, thinking about things while you're doing your makeup. There is that ritualistic approach as well, so that when my makeup's on, it puts me in the right frame of mind for the meeting. I want to start the makeup, but I'm going to talk about some other um, things that I've been reading recently. Uh oh, there's a cat fight going on. So I'm going to start with the dark shade which is this one the brown and hopefully this fight will will stop it's just betty she's not not liking the uh not liking ted today okay so i'm going to start with the brown shade i'm just going to do a really soft eye socket I'm not really doing a base color because i'm going to do going to do quite a natural makeup look anyway so I'm just using the cotton bud just to blend over those edges. Same on the other eye. Yeah, I was reading in the news that there's been lots of women kind of polled about how they feel about doing online meetings and Zoom meetings. And a lot of them have been told by bosses that they had to make more of an effort and wear more makeup. And I think there's, it's crazy that there's this added pressure to, um, you know, kind of perform in a way that, and these are people in very professional industries for which, you know, how they look shouldn't really impact. So I thought I'd just talk today about kind of wearing makeup really in a way that just makes you feel good and doing it in the way that you are comfortable with. And I think a lot of, about Zoom as well is that it is about getting the lighting right because we can all look very, very tired. No matter how good your makeup is, if you've positioned yourself somewhere where there is shadows under your eyes, no amount of concealer is going to get rid of those. So it is about finding maybe on a day when you don't have to do any Zooms, just practicing where the light looks good. So for me, I'm sort of probably a meter away from quite a big window. And I always like that, particularly when the window is quite high and the light comes down. I always find that that's a really nice, even light. Whereas if I was to turn to one side or be in a, a different situation, or in fact, you know, maybe looking into this side window here with a strong light on one side, I would look very heavy under one eye. So it's just really about getting the light right because if the light is good then you're just enhancing with your with your makeup you're not having to correct heavy shadows and it's exactly the same shade along the lower lash line I'm using it slightly thinner at the inner corner and then at the outer corner I'll have it just sweep up a little bit almost like a an eyeliner just up there. Yeah, so I'd love to hear in the comments if you, you're you one of those people that have been told to wear more makeup on Zooms and how you felt about that. I think it's um, a really contentious issue. This is very Betty-ish, this colour. Where is she? I think she's she would like this colour. Slightly glittery. Just going to put a tiny pop just in the centre of the eyelid there. So now I'm just curling my eyelashes, give them a quick curl. And I think if there's only time before a call to do a few things, this is one of the things I'd recommend. Mascara and eyelash curling can just make you look instantly awake. That along with concealer are, the, I think, the Zoom essentials. I'm going to use a waterproof mascara. This is Mr Big. And again, it's quite a lot of payoff very quickly. So it's a good one to use 
if you happen to have an early morning call, maybe you haven't allowed quite enough time to get ready. And within a few strokes, you can have something which is really framing the eye. And you'll probably notice that, or maybe you won't, but my eyebrows have gone really thick and quite dark. That's from, if you were watching, I think, not the last tutorial, or the one before maybe, when I was explaining that I'd been trying out some new lash serums and brow serums, new lash and new brow. Um, I'm just starting to really see the benefits now. I can see it in my lashes, which are definitely getting longer and fuller. And particularly, I can see it in my brows. My brows have also gone darker, which I'm a little bit surprised about. I wasn't expecting it. I think maybe there's something in the formula that slightly darkens the eyebrows, although it's a clear gel. I must go back and check, but I haven't had that with other brow serums before, but I really feel like there's a slight darkening. I mean, it's not, not huge, um, but they've really all grown back in underneath here. The front has really filled out and I have had to pluck them quite a bit under here because they were getting really thick. Oh my God, there's the worst fight going on. Ted, it's Ted, he's winding up Betty really badly because he knows he gets a good reaction from her. It's so easy to get a good reaction that he really enjoys it. And likewise underneath. Just gonna put some moisturizer on now. I'm gonna use the Luminous Defense, Moisture Defense. Just put a thin layer all over. As I say, I've got my lighting right, which really helps you to not have to wear as much makeup or not definitely not have to worry so much about the makeup in terms of shadowiness or looking tired and things like that. Um, I think also when you've got your background, sometimes I've noticed that people really want to be sitting somewhere where there is a nice background. I mean, I'm lucky here because there is a nice background, but that's secondary, I think, to how you look. Like, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this light was nice, if there wasn't a good full-on window here that's very, very even. I'd rather have a terrible background, quite frankly, but a really good um, light, an even light on my face. So I'm just gonna use some foundation. This might be a little light for me now. Huh. This is Luminous Silk 3.5 Armani. Yeah, I think it's, oh, it's warming up. Now I'm just gonna use this all around the center of my face, mainly actually around the center of my face. Touch more. Yeah, I feel like makeup only works as a kind of great concept in the world if you wear it because you love it and you want to and you wear the type of makeup that you want to and you have the choice to wear this kind of makeup that you like or or no makeup if that's what you prefer. Otherwise, once people start telling you what makeup you have to wear, then it's something totally different and it loses all of the creativity, all of the fun, all of the self-expression. Next, I'm gonna use some under eye concealer. This is um, a NARS one. Just a little bit into the inner corner there, just to lift any small shadow there that isn't being obliterated by this lovely sunshine today. Then I'm using the Secret Camouflage, slightly deeper shade from this palette. On a few little spots that I have up here. Just blend that in with a little bit more of the NARS. Just really blending those edges there. A bit more pinpoint. A little touch around the lip line as well, because I'm going to use some lip liner. Just at those outer edges just helps to kind of lift your mouth up there. Mm -hmm. 
stops that kind of downturning mouth. Okay, so now I'm just going back in with the eyeshadow palette just to blend the edges there. Add any more definition. And then for brows, I'm just going to give them a brush. Don't really need to do anything, there's no space. There's so much hair here now. Maybe I'll do on the inside, the top of this brow here, there is a sort of gap, but it's underneath at the top there where they don't really grow anyway. Just fill that. Tiny bit more. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to stop using the brow gel for a while. Maybe I'll go twice a week now. So I'm gonna, it's definitely worked. I'm gonna go back in as well with that lavender glittery shade just for the center of the top. On the eyes there. So I'm gonna set my brows in a moment. Before then, I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of bronzer. I'm going to just put it on slightly sculpty. Oops just on the top of my cheekbones, a little bit around the temples, nothing too like crazy makeup. But you could also do a little bit of contouring if you really want to have that kind of chiseled out look. And I'll link to my video about that, how to really kind of get that shape particularly if you're feeling a bit puffy or your face is a little bit bloated and you have a really important call, a little bit of contouring will absolutely solve that. I'm going to put on some blush, some pink blush. I think this is also a great hack when you are tired because it has this miraculous effect of whitening the whites of your eyes, having that pink quite close to the sort of eye area around the center there and then just buffing up, just lifts the whites of the eyes. Gives you that very alert and attentive look. The good thing about Zoom and all of these video meeting type things is that you can log on early, you can check how you look before you kind of join meetings and don't be afraid to kind of move around and pull down the blinds in the, on, on the window if it's too much or move back away from a window or um, change the angle. If you don't like the angle of your phone, you can move it. You can prop it up on books. You can buy a, a little tripod. Um, I think there's just so many ways that you can really make it so that you are 100% comfortable with how you look and having good light really does help. I'm just about to start the lip liner, but I, uh, this reminds me of a story, or not really a story, just something that I encounter in my professional life all the time. When I'm working with actresses and doing press junkets, we'll often get to um, the place where we're gonna be filming and there'll be a crew there and they'll have spent ages sort of setting up all of the lighting. And what they will have done is they'll have lit the backdrop beautifully, like everything in the backdrop is so well lit. And then my client will sit down and the lighting on her face is just awful. And I always say, uh oh, you've forgotten to, you've spent all your time lighting the backdrop and the backdrop looks amazing, but you've forgotten to make the girl look good. And um, they'll usually laugh and then I'll, but I'll be serious. And then I'll say, okay, now you need to bring the lights around the front so that there's a really nice light actually on the subject as well. And uh, maybe some there'll be a light in the backdrop that's like lighting a plant. And I'll say, move that around. And, you know, so I'm always kind of looking at the lighting all the time. Okay, so for lips, I'm just going to use pencil. This is like a peachy colour. Like a warm peach. I'm going to use it over my lips and also to create uh, a good shape. I'm just check, I 
like that color, I think I do. It's really natural. And then I'm going to use just some lip balm on top. I'm very disappointed we have not had a TED talk. It's particularly, I've had some really good ones, some of the loudest yet recently. I'm gonna finish off by using this brow lamination product. So it's like a soap brow. You put some water onto the lamination there and then you pick up the product. Since I've got really thick brows, I need to groom them. The way I like to do it is I like to groom them up and then I like to kind of press them into place very gently as they're drying. Also keeps them a little bit flatter to the skin, which because mine are so thick at the moment, they're almost sort of sticking out and I want them to be flat. I don't know if you can see how well that worked. So I'm going up, 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 brushing the product through and then just sweeping my finger to kind of settle them down. But also it takes off the excess product as well, because sometimes these brow lamination and soap brow type products can leave a little bit of a crunchy white film through the brows, which obviously we don't want. Maybe I'll do one last thing. I'll go back in with my eye palette and I'm just going to find a small brush again. I'm going to use the lighter shade of the glitters just at the inner corner of the eye. So this is like a slightly minky shade. Again, it looks quite, gives a wide eyed look. Wide awake and ready for business. Okay, so that's the finished look. It's really simple, really quick. I think the main things with Zoom are don't feel pressured into wearing makeup that you don't want to wear. At the same time, get your lighting right. Make sure that you've got, you, you know, you've, you're giving yourself, you're not making things harder for yourself by having a light that makes you look very tired and very shadowy. So experiment a little bit with that. Remember that the background is not the most important thing. It's you and how you look and how you feel. And then use makeup to your advantage to help you to make you feel good, to help you to prepare for meetings, you know, whether it's that just that sense of meditation of getting ready or whether it's just because you want to cover some spots or blemishes or like me, you want to give yourself some nice pink cheeks to make your eyes look really white. But um, I think it, the main thing is it should never be um, something that is stressful. I think a little bit of preparation will just take the stress out of it. So I hope that was helpful and do let me know in the comments about the things I asked about earlier on about whether you've been pressured to or told by your boss to wear more makeup or anything like that. I'd be really interested to hear and um, stay safe everyone. Stay well and I'll see you soon. Bye!